Hey, Jeff, what's going on? How are you doing? No coming in. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Regular meeting of the Township Council is being held in accordance with the scheduled meetings of the Township Council, established and adopted by Township Council, which scheduled designated time, date, and place of this meeting. Adequate public notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. We are using an electronic amplifying recording device in order to obtain a clear and audible record. We request all those wishing to speak be recognized and state your name and address directly into the microphone. The recording device will be still utilized by the Township Clerk's Office for the preparation of minutes and shall be the official record of the Township Council meeting. Madam Clerk, may I have the roll call, please? Mr. Hutchison? Present. Mr. Smith? Present. Mrs. Stubbs? Present. Mrs. Winters? Here. Mr. Mignon? Here. Mrs. Estrada? She's running late. Mr. Mercado? Present. Mr. Lechner? Chief Earl? Here. Mr. Carlmere? Here. Mr. Cardis? Here. We have a presentation this, uh, this evening presentation donation made to the Gloucester Township Police Department of Ballistic Vest for Police Canines. Chief Earl? Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mayor and Council. And uh, Mayor Mayor, would you join me as well? And Council President Mercado? <coughs> Captain Minazzi, would you? Uh, and of course, our canine officers, Officer Eden, Officer Przeworski, and Officer Thompson and their canine partners. Give a shout out as well to our Deputy Chief. Deputy Chief Harkins is with us tonight and also Captain Brendan Barton uh, with us here this evening as well. And Michael and Devin, of course, if you could come up, please. Well, everyone, we're really excited that Michael and Devin and here, residents of Gloucester Township, a school project, but a school project that is really special to the community of Gloucester Township and really to the officers of the Gloucester Township Police Department. And on behalf of all the men and women here, and particularly our, our canine officers that uh, we have with us here tonight, keeping them safe, that they took this project, raising money to donate ballistic protection for our police canines. And it is just really something special that they are doing for their community and doing for police that I'm sure their work is going to spread into this kind of work for others and I certainly hope others that will follow. So it really is an honor that they are here tonight and with that I'm going to turn the microphone over to Michael and he can explain a bit about this program and the great work that he's doing. Hello, I would first like to say good evening. My name is Michael Rebecca and this is my partner Devin Osgood. Devin and I are both seniors at St. Augustine Prep in Richland, New Jersey and also Gloucester Township residents. We started Operation Canine Kevlar to raise awareness in the community and about the importance and safety of our law enforcement canines. We began with the hopes that we would educate the public on the importance of these dogs and hopefully raise enough money to purchase at least one bulletproof vest for them. With the tremendous amount of support we received from the community, we were able to raise enough funds to purchase not one, but three Kevlar vests for these wonderful canines and provide them with the protection they need and deserve. Having seen these canines in action, we were driven to complete our goal. On behalf of Operation Canine Kevlar, Devin Osgood and myself, we would like to thank Captain Manassi, Mayor Mayor, Chief Harkins, the members of our community, and everyone who has contributed to the great success of our foundation. Without everyone's help, this day would not be possible. We now present to you three custom Kevlar bulletproof vests for canines Nico, Sarge, and Cody. Thank you. 
have uh, something special for uh, Mayor Mayor. I kind of wear a vest. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Devin and Michael, uh, thank you so very much, uh, not only for this, but more importantly for the, for the vest for our canines. And I'll tell you, you guys are, are really outstanding young men uh, because you certainly stand out. Uh, and taking this initiative uh, to give back to your community uh, and other communities really uh, shows what type of individuals you are. And I'm really um, excited about the future because I know one day you guys are going to be in charge and we're going to be in good hands. And, and I really, uh, I sincerely thank you on behalf of our town council, the, the chief and our police department, our canine officers uh, for, uh, for, for doing this and having that initiative. I mean, having, taking this initiative as young men in high school really, again, says a lot about who they are. And I thank you and I congratulate you for, uh, for, for, for doing that. I know our canines uh, appreciate that. Uh, they, uh, they told me, actually. They, they but they, uh, they appreciate that very much. And protecting them is so, so vitally important because they provide a vital, vital uh, service for our residents here in Gloucester Township. So once again, uh, Devin and Michael, thank you so very much uh, for this. And, and again, thanks for being the people, uh, the individuals who you are. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank We'll take a five minute recess.
one third of all fatal traffic crashes in the United States involve drunk drivers. And there is impaired driving crashes across the United States, almost 45 billion a year. And whereas 29% of motor vehicle fatalities in New Jersey in 2014 were alcohol related. And whereas an enforcement crackdown is planned to combat impaired driving, and whereas the summer season and the Labor Day holiday in particular are traditionally times of social gatherings which include alcohol. And whereas the State of New Jersey Division of Public Traffic Safety has asked law enforcement agencies throughout the state to participate in the drive sober or get pulled over 2017 statewide crackdown. And whereas this project will involve increased impaired driving enforcement from August 18 through September 4, 2017. And whereas an increase in impaired driving enforcement and a reduction in impaired driving will save lives on our roadways. Therefore, be it proclaimed that I, David Mayor, Mayor of the Township of Gloucester and Ireland, and Mercado Council President, declare our support for the drive set of over 2017 statewide crackdown from August 18, 2017 through September 4, 2017, and pledges to increase awareness of the dangers of drinking and driving. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Uh, we'll now have our first public portion. Anyone wish to speak uh, only on agenda items only, please raise your hand. Mr. Polidoro. Good evening, Council. Ray Polidor from the historic village of Ariel. Congratulations to the township on the uh, gifts that the dogs received and the protection that they will receive, as well as our police officers. Um, tonight, it looks like on the agenda is the uh, aggregate re-up for residential. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. At the last meeting, at the, at the last meeting, uh, you had made a comment about the Patches article regarding that the last meeting was for public property, or I'm sorry, uh, the, the township properties and, and uh, government properties and what have you. You gave no indications that when you said that this was going to, for the residential, be in the future, that it would be the very next meeting. It seemed a little bit uh, tough that folks would not be prepared for that. That being said, there were some questions that were asked and have been asked as we were nearing this renewal period. Some of which were folks just inquiring, am I automatically going to be continue to be opt out? And if they were on third parties, did you come back with the answers of those questions that people had asked at that time so that everything is ironclad and clear to the people so there are no surprises for those who are going to be put on the aggregate? Yes. Uh, one of the questions was asked, for example, the uh, PSE&G contract is only going to be extended two additional months. If at the end of the day it's XYZ company as a new energy provider, if you opted out from the beginning, you're opted out in this particular, with a new provider. You have to opt out. <coughs> uh, so that answers that particular question. Are there any other questions that you have? Two months extension. At the end of that two months, is there another company that is going to be vying for that? For well, that going out to bid. Okay, and then the process will begin again and right. be heard before council, so folks will get a chance. And Atlantic City Electric with uh, Triangle, Tri which is additional. Triangle, Tri I'm sorry. Uh, that was an additional 22 months. So you will go from a yearly to almost a two-year on the renewal. Correct. Any increase in the cost as they had incurred on the uh, on the first go around was there increase decrease? No, there has to be uh, a savings. Sense wise, is it the same exact amount that they were on right now? Will they be entering into under that same amount, or does that fluctuate? So, if Atlantic City Electric, let's say, went up. Two cents. Well, they're going to go up to stay underneath. Is the renewal? You would think that they would be locked in at the same price, not just what they're going to save. I don't have their particular contract in front of me, but what I do have is representatives from Good Eagle here. Good okay. Good I'm just throwing up all the mess up the words. Good energy, yes. uh, gentlemen. Uh, if you can come up for a second and answer Mr. Pondo's I'd be happy to yield the rest of my time to them. Excuse me? I'd be happy to yield the rest of my time to them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Charles DeCastage, I'm managing partner Good Energy. Um, uh, as to answering the question on the Atlantic City Electric extension, it is up to 22 months extension, but we're probably looking at a 12 or 14 month extension as it's yielding uh, a lower rate than the 22 months. As to his question is, are the rates, and is an absolute value going up or down? They're actually going down. The, uh, the current township contract with Atlantic City, with Tri-Eagle is 10 cents. We're expecting about 9.2 or 9.3. So that program's going down, and the two-month extension with uh, Consolidated Edison is at the same rate, which is way below market, and then we will be rebidding. And everyone that had opted out of these programs before will not be included going forward. This is only for the current participants, of which there are almost 13,000, who have, um, have saved significantly and wish to stay in the program. Thank have I answered all those questions? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there any consideration for senior citizens? There's just one rate. There's one rate, for, one all, rate, one rate, rate for all residents. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the first public portion. Uh, ordinance is the first reading. Uh, ordinance 0-17-23, Ordinance of the Township of Gloucester, County of Camden, in the state of New Jersey, amending Ordinance 0-03-03, land development regarding parking of trucks and buses, recreational vehicles, driveways, and grading plans. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson expressed an interest in tabling this, is that correct? Yes, Mr. McConnell, I'd like to make a motion to table this. Okay. Is there a second? Second. On the question, roll call. Mr. Hutchinson? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Stubbs? Yes. Mrs. Venters? Yes. Mr. Mignon? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes, the table. Next, we have a resolutions of consent agenda. Any council member that would like to remove any of the items, please speak up. Hearing none, I entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Stubbs. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Stubbs? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mignon? Yes. Mrs. Strato? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Next, we have, uh, we did not receive any GTE Gov access emails. Now we have our second public portion. Anyone wishing to speak on any item, please raise your hand. Ms. Kelly. Good evening, Council. Uh, I'm Seth Kelly from Stonebridge Townhomes. Um, I wanted to come before Council this evening to ask. Um, I have been speaking with uh, Mrs. Blanche Williams, who is the wife of Mr. Billy Paul. I'm not sure if you all know who Billy Paul yes. was. You um, Jones? Yes, okay. Mrs. Jones. Um, well, the resident here. That is correct, and that's why I'm coming before the council this evening. Um, he was, has been or was a long-term resident of Gloucester Township, and specifically in Blackwood. And I was speaking with his wife and asking if perhaps there was something that the council, um, along with mayor, would consider to perhaps honor Mr. Paul as a longtime resident of Gloucester Township and obviously a very um, well-known and seasoned um, singer, um, has won Grammy Awards as well as American Music Awards. Um, we're not quite sure exactly what can be done um, or ideas. I was just speaking with her about a few ideas, if there is something that could be named after him, if there is some type of annual concert or event we could do in his honor, um, if there's some type of scholarship fund that could be set up for students within Gloucester Township who have an interest and passion for the music industry, specifically vocalists or some sort. Um, but I did let her know that I would come before council this evening make the presentation the idea and maybe it's something that we could meet separately with her um, she would at that time be willing to come and sit down and discuss what possibilities are available um, at that time and i told her i would let her know if that was possible and you would serve on that committee correct miss kelly yes I have no, I, I explained to her as well, I have no knowledge, nor am I in the music industry, but would be more than willing to assist where I could. If you could put her information to me, uh, we'll reach out to her. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. 
everyone. My name is Sabrina Umstead Smith. I am a resident of uh, Gloucester and I live in Terrestria, uh, Fox Smith, yeah, Terrestria. Uh, I am coming before council to make a suggestion. I know that we get alerts or we are able to get alerts in terms of emergencies and car accidents and flooding and all that sort of thing. And I'd like to suggest that uh, an alert be sent out to those who are signed up for the texting about this meeting that takes place on a regular basis. Um, I think it would help improve the attendance. That's my suggestion. Okay. Thank you very much. Ms. Shirley. Good evening to everybody. Um, I'm Shirley from 29 Bookshire Road. And I come before you to let you know, good news, we had our backpack drive hosted by um, not just pizza, and we um, gave away 41 backpacks to Mullen, James Ellie, and Timber Creek High School Saturday from 1 to 4, and the children got pizza and soda. Uh, we have a lot of pictures, and um, my co-partner Carol's going to post them so you'll be able to see them. Okay, and um, we had donations from Bethany Baptist Church in Gibbsboro and Five Below, and we raised $740 to get these things for the kids. Everybody had a good time. The second part is the playground. Okay, the playground is up. The foundation was put down, and I noticed that Saturday and Sunday they had a police officer there because kids are curious, and I was informed that teenagers you know, were, took the swings down and were the baby swings, once we put a baby in, and they were on them, okay? The playground is not ready, okay? And um, I understand the signage, you know, you know, a toddler park, ages three to 10 or 11, okay? Surveillance cameras, I was informed we we're gonna have that. And two benches and the picnic table, because we wanna do more for our community than just, just have a park. And as you all well know, the park is my pet thing, and I plan to do a lot with our kids to get them off the streets and to let them know that the community cares about them. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I have very, very strong concerns about other issues, um, and I'm going to talk to Jennifer about that, Officer Jennifer McLaughlin about that. And I just want the township to know that we appreciate the Department of Public Works. And I don't know who will relay the message, but they've been by our side since we began this. They're there all the time. They, they help us clean up. You know, they do everything. We make a phone call, they're there. Now, there are a lot of homes now being renovated. And there's complaints that when the contractors come in, they basically gut these townhouses and they leave all the debris on the street and it's like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and people are complaining. Like a lot of people are out cleaning up their yards and everything like that, but they look across the street and there's all this debris. And the trash people, they come and they get it, and it takes them like 15, 20 minutes to pick it all up. That's how much is there. So I'm getting complaints, phone calls saying, would you please somehow or another let the mayor or somebody know to contact these people or something can be put out that when they are re renovating these homes, that you know, we're trying to clean up our community, you know, not have all this trash out there. Mm -hmm. And kids, being that they have basically nothing else to do, mm -hmm. they will go through the trash and they'll play with it. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, it's all over the streets. Mm -hmm. And Carol and I, we have these gloves and these here shop by bags. And we go up and down the street picking up trash. Mm -hmm. And some of that stuff is a little bit too heavy for us. So that's what we call public works. They come out and they help us. But that's really not their job, to, you know what I mean? They're, they're, doing what they're supposed to do, but they go over and above. So hopefully maybe, you know, you council members here can, you know, whoever I need to contact, uh, code enforcement, or have him go out there or come through the neighborhood now that they're doing so many renovations, mm -hmm. which is a plus for Brittany Woods. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, have him come around more often, and when he sees the contractors out there, let them know that you got to take that stuff with you. Mm -hmm. They don't pay taxes in Gloucester Township. So you got to take your trash with you. Mr. Carver, off the top of your head, is there a limit of the amount of debris that they can put on uh, a curb at a particular time? So it has to be in the proper containers. Let's see. There is a limit. There is a limit. Yes. That's part of our administration. 
administrative code, yes, there's a section on trash, and it's limited. Uh, it tells you the times that you can put them. Put the trash uh, time, on. yes. It's a number of containers, and it has uh, <coughs> sizes. Also. Okay. So we may have to revisit that and possibly send out code enforcement to enforce that. Yeah, if you have a contractor, that's a code violation. We, Carol and I, when we, we basically walk our neighborhood a lot and we meet the contractors and we ask them are they, you know, rent, going to rent this or are they going to buy it? And we talked to them and said, you know, you have to take this with you. And they said, okay, it's because it's against ordinance to leave it out here. And you don't pay taxes here, so you have to take your trash with you. You know, and um, they said they would, but, you know, we're not standing there watching them, you know, so you go back the next day and the trash is there. But other than that, thank you very much for listening, and hopefully when we have the playground um, finished, when Gloucester Township has a playground finished, they're telling me two more weeks, we can have a grand opening, and you're coming. Yes. We want you there. All right. I'll go down right? the slide. <laughs> you always got jokes for me. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? <coughs> this Sarah Bass Young? Good evening, Council. Good evening. I'm Sarah Bash Young. I have so much on my mind we would be here till one o'clock tonight. But I'm gonna skip all that. And I just want to commend you for doing such a Herculean job in this community. God bless you and your family. Keep on keeping on into this audience. Thank you for coming out. We need you. We're going to fill this place up and we're going to give thanks. I, you know I'm going to do something stupid. I'd like someone up there to volunteer and tell me what do we have to be thankful for in the Gloucester County? Is it county or township? What do you call it? In Gloucester Township. Will someone volunteer and tell me what do we have to be thankful for? I just want a good person to answer me. What do we have to be thankful for? I like to say something. See, earlier this night, we have a community that works together. We've got our police dogs getting vests, parks going up, areas being cleaned up. To me, that's a strong community that's willing to work together. And that is something to be very thankful for. What is your name? Michael Mignot. Well, thank you for representing these great people. Now we'll have just one more person to speak. We need you to speak up. One more person. What do we have to be thankful for? Michelle? I think along the lines of what Michael said, for the teenagers that we um, honor three or four different times through the year, there's always amazing teenagers with the work that they do. And I'm always um, grateful for them because they're our future. I thank you. Now I'm getting ready to take my seat. There was one more thing I was going to say, and I forgot what it was. So I'll just take my seat. Miss Sarah, uh, I want to say I'm thankful for you coming out this evening. So Next you. month, I'll be 93. I am God bless you. There will be four parties. Four parties. <laughs> one in Florida. Well, contact me. If okay. you want to find them, contact Marie. Okay. I'll tell you why there's going to be a party each week. I'll tell you why. One Bible said I was born on the 29th. And somebody found another part Bible and said I was born on the 23rd. 
Well, my mother died when I was 18 months old. So I'm a weed. I grew up like this. But I tell you what, I'm very happy with Jesus alone. I'm not angry with anybody about anything. And I'm getting ready. You see me walking around here like this now. I have a reason for all of that. But when I come out of that water therapy tomorrow, I'm going to change my tune. Watch the papers. Because I have something to say about a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Marie Myers, I believe I, I know what um, the third thing was that she wanted to say. Um, has council considered doing any type of um, community event um, to pull everyone together after the Charlotte um, incident, like some kind of a candlelight vigil or? Um, not collectively, we haven't talked about it. I know in my head when I saw the event, I, I was thankful this week that we had an eclipse we had a boxing fight that people were talking about on Facebook rather than talking about flags and statues because uh, it, it is, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed in, in, in some folks that I consider Facebook friends that post things and I don't delete them, I just I observe and monitor it, uh, but it's disheartening uh, because uh, a lot of this stuff is learned. Absolutely. You can learn to hate, you can learn to love. And um, one of my favorite classes, I'm sorry to take up your time, but no. one, of my, one of my favorite classes in undergrad in college was a class called Ethnic Minority Relations. And uh, the professor came in and um, called us all these ethnic slurs, and she says, why are you responding to this? And we sat down for the next 15 weeks, two nights, uh, two hour classes, two, twice a week, and talked about race. Sometimes people are uncomfortable talking about that. And we talked about stereotypes and myths, and I'll use my, myself for example. Yes, Puerto Ricans, we do like rice and beans and chicken. Yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. But we're not 13 in a car, you know. And, but we talked about that and we had a discussion. And we came to the realization that we all want the same things in life. You know, we want our children to have a better life than us, we want a good education want a home, a good community. Uh, it's the way we go about it and the way that we express it. Um, but I don't think that as a community we've, uh, I, I've spoken to some clergy uh, over the last two weeks about it that um, express some disappointment about what took place and has taken place in our country recently, but collectively as a community, no. But Maureen? Well, here's the thing. I mean, one of the things that I have learned since I've been with my husband, um, we're an interracial couple, and there is, and I'll say ignorance, but not in a, in a nasty way, just because it, we haven't learned about different cultures and races and things of that nature. And with all the people that my husband and I talk to, there's so many, you know, perceptions out there of, of, of differences that are really not true, or if they are, no one's, everyone's afraid to talk about it, like you said. So, I mean, we have a very diverse community here. And, you know, just if there's anything that we can do as far as maybe, like your professor did, have some kind of round table, you know, to invite the community to, to just talk about some of the things. Because the things that I've experienced with my husband would, one race would gasp at, and maybe another one would not. But until you live it, which I'm sure you've lived it, yes. I didn't live it before meeting my husband. You know, I was very sheltered. You know, I, I, I had, we had three African Americans in my high school graduation class, the Lawrences. <laughs> that was it. Um, so I think one of the things that I've learned and my family have learned it's okay to talk about things as long as it's in a respectful manner. So I know she was talking, Miss uh, Mrs. Young was talking about doing some kind of a vigil, but something to just bring us together because 
even in Gloucester Township, we are so far apart. We really are. So anyway, thanks for thanks, Maureen. I appreciate it. Yes. Not far from here, but Walla. And across the street is a place called Lamppost. And next door to Lamppost is a large field. I would like to use that field and fill it up with people. And, and somewhere, one of you know where, where there's a, I call it a wagon, but it's a stage or something. And I want to get up on that stage and I have something to say to everybody. Then we're going to all make circles with candles in our hands. And we're going to light our candles and we're going to pray. And but who do I ask if we, are, if we can use that field for what I have in mind? And I'm going to do it across the United States of America through sororities and fraternities. I don't get in a helicopter and I don't know what time to go over Chicago and what time to go over Florida and what time to, this is going to be a national election. So much is going on right here, it's going to pop over. Now who do I have to talk to to use that field across next door to that post? Well, Ms. Young, that's a township field. If you wanted to ask, inquire about using that field, you would make that inquiry through Mr. Carter and through the administration, the Mr. mayor's office. Tom, right here, through the mayor's office. Tom, raise your hand. Yeah. Actually, it will be an application. And through the rec center, rec center, center but, but, but you can help facilitate yeah, it. It's, it's a yeah, green acres purchase field. So I um, really don't have any plans for it. But you can facilitate yeah. that if that's something that Michelle wanted to Where's his office? Uh, right down at the tax office. Down where? Tax office. Where the assessor is? Oh, right. down the hallway. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I have people re ready to go, but I want to do it right. Okay. Because I know what I'm doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Nora Hoff, and I live at 58 Yorkshire, actually across the street. The park is going to be built there. My concerns that I have with the park is the safety of the children. Um, a couple nights ago, we had a shooting in our neighborhood, um, and it caused an alarm for the children that run up and down the neighborhood because of the shooting was right near the park. It's on Yorkshire. The shooting was in Yorkshire. The park's on Yorkshire. I have a gentleman here also that lives right down the street, actually two doors down from where the shooting happened. My concern is that when the police have been there for the last two days, it's been calm in our neighborhood because the police were there on the cul-de-sac where the park is. As soon as they left today, it started over again. Um, we have when little you say kids. They started over again. What, what, were the, what was taking place there? Can he speak also? Because yeah. he's right down the street. Well, all right. If you want to tag team, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, we can tag team. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we have 24 7 coverage there because the Ford Rubber Service had his set. If anybody had walked on it, they would have been permanent. Good evening, Richard Zervin, 42 Yorkshire Road. Um, what we mean by it's right back to what it was, there are just people lawyering, open air drug deals, all kinds of all kinds of stuff going on. The shooting was actually my house was enclosed in the crime scene table Saturday morning. It's a disgrace what goes on in there. Um, fist fights. All hours of the night, all the police, by the time the police get there, it's dispersed. It's dispersed. Um, we've talked to the police officers on the street, asked them to, hey, can you pay a little more attention to what's going on in here? We're assured that they do, but it doesn't seem to be having any, any result. I moved in, um, Brittany was in 1996. I left Burlington County. I actually researched their area. Not that Brittany Woods is the best place to live, but it's a good place to live. I mean, it's not the best in terms of probably other places around here. But when I moved in in 1996, it was really a nice area. And we had police patrolling all the time. But now, it's it's not happening anymore. So the crime rate, rate went up in our neighborhood. That's part of Gloucester Township. So when the policemen were there watching the park for the two days, all the crime that was happening in the area 
they would actually drive down the street, see the policeman there, turn around real fast and drive back out because there's drug deals all up and down that street, drug dealers and drugs, you know, going back and forth. As soon as the policeman left, like I said, it started up again. So we just want to know what we can do for the children because children play in that area where the cul-de-sac is. They ride their bicycles up and down. People drive up that street 35, 40, 45 miles an hour just on that strip. And on Prospect Avenue, they're hitting 80. And there's got to be something we can do mm. about the traffic because when one of those children get when if they get hit by a car, that's it. They're done. If if they get if because of the gunshots and the guns going on back and forth, they're shooting each other over drugs. It just takes one stray bullet, and that's it. So you know, we, we, we just need some help. And with the policemen being there, it does help. But we need them there a lot more. Um, I know that our okay. police department in our township has dedicated um, numerous resources to your particular neighborhood. I would say over the last year, uh, off from the block, but in the back is a constant figure um, in your neighborhood. The chief is here. I'm sure he's documenting uh, your concerns. Uh, chief, if, I don't know if you can disclose some of the things that, or if you're working on anything there, but. Yeah, we're well familiar with the, uh, and we've, as you said, we've worked in the neighborhood quite a bit. Uh, over the past year or two, and well familiar with the incident that happened the other night, it's, it's under investigation. Yeah, I got, I was mowing my lawn this afternoon or this morning, I got stopped by two of the uh, investigators, I guess, from the county, and uh, was talking to them, I was like, take a look around. You can't swing a dead cat in that neighborhood without hitting something. You, you take your finger and you, you go a 180 degree turn, you fire a weapon in there, you are gonna hit something. It just, it's absolutely intolerable. And we were wondering, you know, why isn't there any speed bumps on Prospect Avenue? Because the way they drive on Prospect Avenue is, it's like they're on a highway on 42 at 65, 70 miles an hour. I mean, they hit that bump, there's a hill, they hit that hill so hard that they bottom out their car. You can hear it at 2 o'clock in the morning. And they pass you. Yeah. You're doing 25 they go around us. When you're driving slow, like 25 miles per hour, there's somebody driving past you, going around you at 65. We'll speak to you about the speed bumps in the study that we do. We'll, we, we can monitor. I know about the, 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 fire, the, fire, the fire department. It's a controversy with the fire department. But there's got to be something else. There's got to be something else besides speed bumps that can control the traffic in that area. We have a lot of small, my grandchildren play out there. When they come to visit me, I let them play. I'm too afraid to let them play now because of the guns, the drugs, and the speed. We'll speak. We have a pretty strong approach that you know we'll share with you, but some things I unfortunately can't share with you. Yes, I know. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the second poll portion. Polling of directors. Mr. Lechner? I have nothing to report. No. Chief Pearl? Nothing to report, thank you. Carla Mayor? Nothing to report. Cardis? Nothing to report. Hudson? Uh, Ms. Sarah, I didn't uh, answer your question because I wanted to thank you before I responded. Um, what am I thankful for? Well, a few years ago, I opened up my constitutional law book and I started reading cases. I can't hear you. Somebody told me I started reading cases uh, from cases from the uh, United States Supreme Court. Do you have a microphone up there? I did. And the, uh, the cases that I started reading pertain to um, education, education for all, segregation. And one of the cases, although I can't remember the name of it, dealt with a school down south uh, or a town down south or a board of education that did not want to integrate. And they were told that they had to integrate um, because everybody deserved an education. Well, rather than do that, they wanted to disband the public school system down there and have everybody go to private schools so that they would not have to provide an education to the, um, the black children in that community. Thankfully, we are past those days. And we live in a town that is very diverse. Not perfect, but very diverse. Very accepting 
And if you go to any of the high schools, Triton, uh, Timber Creek, or Highland, and you walk the hallways, you're going to see a diverse student body. We may not get the best scores on the standardized tests, but I would suggest to you that we have a great student body, a great town, and a town that I'm very proud to live in. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening and thank you for all your comments. Mrs. Stubbs? I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and uh, with the young gentleman who raised the money for best. You know, children, um, they develop and grow and they're products of the environment. And it's the role models uh, provide the guidance. So we have to always be mindful that we are role models for children. Yes. Regardless of where we are or yes. what we're doing, we always have to remember that children are watching. And that should prompt us to put our best foot forward. Happy. Mrs. Spencers? I do want to thank everyone for coming out and their comments. Um, <clears throat> I think it's wonderful what those two young gentlemen did for our canines. Um, you know, they're working, they're on the job all the time, just like our officers are. They deserve that protection. Um, I'd also like to put out uh, a prayer for everyone in Houston and Texas and what they're going through. Mr. Nguyen? Thank you, Officer Nguyen. Thank you all for coming out tonight, and uh, everybody have a safe uh, Labor Day, and unfortunately summer's coming in, so uh, have a good one, be safe going home tonight. Mrs. Prada? I would like to speak on behalf of the American Cancer Society. As you all know, we had our Relay for Life event in June. It was the Camden County Relay for Life held here in Gloucester Township, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank the community and Public Works and the police uh, for their participation in helping us to have another successful relay. Uh, we stand right now, we'll probably close out the end of August. We've raised $85,000. So on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without the support of the community, so thank you. I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. If you have some time, I encourage you to go down to the uh, bike path and check out our bike sharing program, which is located across from the caboose. Um, also, I want to thank the young men from St. Augustine, uh, Augustine Prep for their donation and uh, wish the students of Gloucester Township who are returning to school next week a successful year. And I want to wish everyone a happy uh, Labor Day. With that, I entertain a motion. Oh, see, one more thing. We are accepting, uh, during the month of September at our second council meeting, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, we are accepting nominations uh, for individuals that made a contribution to our community that are uh, Latino descent. Um, they can be made, it's on the website, um, and that they are reviewed by a committee, and then they are celebrated uh, at the September 25th council meeting. With that, I entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. The second, all those in favor? Thank you. Great evening. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll try. They're doing it. They're doing it. How are you? Good.